do you do case studies and want to spice them up? Or do you do blood typing and want to include real world examples to help your students get deeper understanding? Well then using a words kit with a case study can be the perfect match. To start off on a case study, students are often given a story where they can get their background knowledge and start filling in a chart that will help them to analyze the case. In this particular case, the students are going to look at a blood typing um, case study where they're going to look at the parents and get some information on all the possible parents and complete a paternity test. So they might find out things like the gender of their patients, the age, and any symptoms that they have. So they might get things like blood type or certain ethical situations that are working in. In this case, we have a patient who's going to have twins. So we're looking at that as being one of her symptoms. In this particular case, they're also going to be looking at um, the father, so paternity, based off the blood types. And that's where they're going to be able to either support or refute their hypotheses with the additional data that they're going to be getting through the blood typing. In the questions section, when they're doing the case study analysis, they usually put questions that they would want to ask the patient. So they might ask, like, when was her last period, to kind of get the timing down and figure out maybe that might be a way to determine who the father is in that case. And then they might also research terms. So if you haven't done a lecture on blood typing, then that would be another way for them to kind of find out the information on their own by putting it down as something they need to do additional research before they can analyze the data appropriately. So we're going to be using the Ward simulated ABO blood typing. And inside of it, they give you a teacher guide and a student guide. But instead of using the case that they've written, we're going to make one up and then use that instead. In this particular one, we're going to be using the blood of two of the individuals that they have in here. So they have blood and they have anti-serum. They've got blood typing plates and they've also got some toothpicks to help you with the mixing and some microscope slides. In the case study that they provided, or the case that they provided, they have an individual with A positive blood, and they have an individual with B blood, which are gonna be the two fathers, as well as the two different um, twins in this case, two different children in our case study. So that way, we're able to have the correct blood type. So rather than following their instructions, we're going to just rename these two bottles with Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones as baby one, baby two, and um, father one, father two. So that way the students will have a slightly different case from what is written up in the book. But you can still use the same equipment. Alrighty, so you're going to go ahead and add a couple of drops of blood to each of the wells, taking the blood sample from one of your patients. Make sure that they use the same blood for one plate and all three of all of the wells. Um, you might have to buy some of the blood in bulk, so that way you have enough for your entire class. And I find it more convenient to have several beakers full, so that way each of the students' tables can have a little bit. Then you're going to take the anti-serum and place it on the correct well. Don't touch it to the well, but a couple of drops inside for each. So I put my anti-serum for A, I'm putting in my anti-serum for B, and then I'm putting my anti-RH. And then you're going to use a separate toothpick for each of them to mix. And the idea is that if it starts to coagulate or mix together, you might see a color change. You might see it start to clot up. And that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to mix for a few seconds for A. Mix it up for B. And you can see for B, it's starting to change color. And you're starting to see some of the cells kind of come together. And then I do the same thing for RH to see if that is going to be an indicator. And again, if it clots in that area, that's the type of blood that you've got. And the students kind of enjoy doing it. It's really nice and fast and easy. You're just kind of watching for sterile technique. A lot of students will like use the same toothpick because they're so excited. They'll use the same toothpick for each one. So having a system where they know which toothpicks are used and which ones are not is going to be kind of uh, helpful for that. For this case study, I went with heteropaternal superfecundation, which means that there's two twins and they have two different fathers, one for each twin. The possibility of this happening is very low, but it makes for an interesting case study because the students start to second guess themselves. They start to think that maybe I did my technique wrong, so they'll try to do the procedure again, come up with the same result, realize that they're doing perfect technique, but that their data is unusual 
and then they have to come up with the reason why it happened and how, you know, how did it actually happen. So we're looking at two different sperm and two different eggs over the course of about three days or so for it to happen. So it's kind of a nice, interesting case for them to delve a little bit deeper, get into those topics of Punnett squares, um, blood inheritance, as well as fertilization.